Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming today. Um, I want to introduce you to Caleb Cottle, who is the Director of Business Development at Cascade Academy, an RTC for adolescent girls struggling with anxiety. Thank you for coming today. Well, I definitely want to uh, thank Jean and Kathy and everyone else at IACA for organizing this, for putting this together and giving us an opportunity to really introduce ourselves. I know you've probably all been on many, many Zoom calls already. You've probably done a lot of these big IACA meetings. And uh, I would guess that you likely have been familiar with a lot of the programs uh, prior to this Zoom meeting, uh, prior to having this and doing that. So in that we're new and we opened on April 8th with our first students, uh, we're actually kind of introducing ourselves to the entire industry during this wild time. And uh, we're excited to be here. We appreciate your attention. We appreciate your time. And we look forward to hopefully presenting you with information that is uh, helpful uh, specific and get, helps you get to know Cascade Academy. Uh, just to kind of get everyone on the same page, we do have Leah K. Roberts, our, uh, our uh, admissions director. She is taking notes on all of the questions that you have. We're going to run you through a PowerPoint presentation that's going to tell you everything that we think is relevant about Cascade Academy. And if you have questions, please type your questions into the uh, group chat. She will be making note of those questions since we're on a pretty specific time frame. We may not be responding them to them immediately, but I promise you if we don't answer that question through the course of this presentation, we'll reach out to you specifically, answer that question, and obviously we'd love to follow up with any of you following this presentation. So thank you, it's wonderful to see all of your uh, beautiful faces. And uh, I will now share my screen and we will jump into this uh, presentation that we've put together specifically for this group here. All right, we are Cascade Academy, uh, located in the Mid Midway City in the Heber Valley. And uh, we are excited to present ourselves in a new way to treat adolescent girls struggling with anxiety. So I'll turn the time over to Brad Gerard, our executive director, and he'll do a little bit of introduction for us. Thanks, Caleb. The Cascade team, uh, together we have over 75 years experience between the four directors you see here. Rebecca joined us in uh, January as clinical director. She has significant experience um, as a therapist, clinical director, as well as a CEO. Leah Kay joined us in March as director of admissions, has a lot of experience in helping parents through the admissions process where she worked at Wasatch Academy. Um, as well as event management and executive assisting. Caleb, uh, of course, you've met our director of business development. He's also co-founder and partner with myself um, and John and Carol Probst. And of course, he's a wealth of knowledge, experience both in business and program development, as well as leadership. It's just been a great support here. Uh, my experience stems from 12 years in the inpatient behavioral health care side of treatment for a number of large corporations. Uh, but in 99, I moved over to the, the world of residential treatment for adolescents specifically, and have been doing this for the past 21 years. And um, I'll turn the time over to Caleb to talk a little bit more about uh, what we do here. Thank you, Brad. It's been uh, quite a journey here. I'm just going to quickly insert there. When we first reached out to Brad about Cascade Academy, he thought it was a consulting gig. And I laughed because, uh, you know, he had talked to his wife and he says, you know, I'm never again going to start a new brand new program. I'm never going to work with all girls and I'm never going to move back to Utah. He was living in Idaho at the time. And uh, I reached out to him and said, hey, I've got an interesting proposal for you. And it pretty much violates all of those three ideas that you are considering. 
So it was a, a kind of a funny way to start. Our journey here has been a long one. Uh, it's been very eventful, but we're so happy to be where we're at now. It started three years ago uh, when we wanted to open a treatment center here in the Mid Midway Valley. And, uh, you know, we had, it took three years for us to negotiate with the city of Midway exactly what that would look like. One of the great things that uh, came about that three-year path was us meeting John and Carol Propes. They're the owners of this beautiful home that you see here. And originally, they were going to sell us the home or lease it to us. And over time, as things materialized and grew, they fell so much in love with our vision, with the passion of what we were doing. They really wanted to be partners in this. And so they actually have become our financial partners over the past three years. And as I said, we opened in April uh, of this year and we're excited to be enrolling girls currently. Uh, the vision really started, uh, I, I started in this field, in this industry about 16, 17 years ago in the wilderness uh, in, in the wilderness programs. I learned I could get paid to go camping and I thought that was a really good gig at the time. Uh, but what I found was that there's really no substitute for experiential programming. Uh, it's important to talk, it's important to educate, it's important to learn, but doing and experiencing things, that's really where changes take place in the brain and growth is made. And, and as we were thinking about Cascade, we really want it to be an experiential experience for our students. Uh, after my stint in the wilderness and several other experiences, I ended up as one of the founders of Kalo, uh, moved out there to help build that program and uh, started there with four students and watched it grow to about 90 when I left. It's bigger than that now, but uh, through that process, I really watched things evolve and uh, missed it when it was small and specialized. I remember knowing every student's name and every parent's name and every student's issues and felt like it really lost some of the intimacy as it grew. And one of the things that we wanted to really uh, focus on because of that experience, and we've all had experience in 100 bed plus programs, all four of us here, uh, we really wanted it to stay small, to stay specialized and, and be kind of the mom and pop shop that can really individualize treatment according to the needs of each student. And uh, lastly, uh, some of you will understand how relevant this is, but to be independently owned, I think is something that we really are, are grateful for. Um, I've worked with other facilities that were owned by larger corporations and they do a wonderful job and I respect them like crazy. And sometimes the need to please investors, the need for things, uh, it can affect the clinical model in some ways and you sacrifice some of the clinical integrity in order to grow size and things like that. And so uh, myself, uh, Brad Gerard, and uh, John and Carol Propes, we are the four owners of Cascade Academy, and uh, we have it written into our bylaws that uh, unanimous decisions need to be made between the four of us in order to uh, make any drastic changes within Cascade Academy. And so uh, we're happy about that, we're excited about that, and uh, we look forward to growing. We look forward some, for some of the uh, chaos of the current pandemic to pass so that people are more confident economically and everything else so that things can grow. So that's a little bit about our history. Uh, I wanted to make sure everyone has all of the facts up front. So I'm gonna pass the screen over to Leah Kay and she's gonna walk through really the high level points. A great opportunity for you to take a screenshot if you'd like. Uh, but she's going to walk through just some of the important uh, frequently asked questions that people have about Cascade Academy here. Will you okay? Thank you all for joining us today and your interest in our program. We really appreciate your time. And, and as you can see how beautiful our property is and the surrounding area, beautiful place. So we are a specialty program that specializes in girls with anxiety or OCD related disorders. We will take them as young as 13 years old, all the way up to 18 or just before their 18th birthday. Um, we're anticipating the average length of stay being about nine months, but of course this is very individualized dependent on the treatment plan and how well they are doing. Uh, we are located, as Caleb said, in Midway, Utah. And for those of you who don't know where that is, we're about 52 miles from the Salt Lake City International Airport. And if you're familiar with Daniels Academy and New Focus, uh, they're right here in Heber City, about 10, 15 minutes from us. So currently we are, I get this question a lot, we are accepting uh, 
girls from home. Of course, we have a very strict COVID-19 policy. We're taking them from wilderness. And eventually, when the boarding schools open up again at public schools, of course, that will be also, we'll be taking girls from there. So the home, as you can see, is almost 13,000 square feet. So John and Carol Probst are one of our founders. They raised their six beautiful children here, has nine bedrooms, 10 bathrooms. Seven of those bathrooms are full bathrooms. Um, we put three girls in each bedroom, and there are no bunk beds. So beautiful. You'll get to see that at the end on our, on our slideshow. Um, to view the property. And as you can see on the outside, a beautiful almost over three acre property with a basketball and tennis court, volleyball, we can play soccer here, very close to uh, great national parks, can ride their bikes, go on wellness walks every day. Vegetable garden, we have that uh, out back as well. Uh, the clinical piece, we'll do individual and family therapy once a week, as well as group therapy, three to five hours a week. Uh, Academic-wise, we are with an accredited program, Alta Independent, so we're doing that, but we do have a licensed teacher on site. And we'll be getting more as we enroll more students. Uh, testing on site, psychological testing is available, SAT and ACT prep and testing, career assessment, and then we also, which will be explained later on, the Pro 7 genetic assessment, which is a very important piece of our program. And as you can see from our affiliate staff, we are very fortunate to have Dr. Dan Purser. He will be our MD that will be reviewing the genetic piece of our girls, and Dr. Todd Corelli and Dr. Abby Jenkins uh, will also do psychological testing and other things for us. Kristen Brown and Clint Peterson, excellent um, APRNs, do our medical piece and med management. And currently we're looking for a board certified behavior analysis. So if you'd like to, like Caleb said, take a quick screenshot of this, but I also will send you the highlights by email. I'll provide that in the chat as well. So. This is Brad again. Ultimately, as our goal here and our mission is to help girls struggling with anxiety and OCD related disorders. So the girls come to us from a variety of settings and present with a variety of challenges, but all have one common thread that is anxiety. The anxiety is causing uh, such distress that there's really an inability to create their own level of health, healthy functioning. Girls start with us in a relatively small comfort zone, of course, as you can imagine. And as you see here, our goal through various therapies and activities um, that we'll get into detail here with Rebecca is to challenge them and move them through to further expand the comfort zone by realizing and experiencing both success and failures along the continuum. Uh, care, of course, is taken not to overload or avoid and get them into the what we refer to as the distress zone and uh, ultimately we teach the girls to embrace life with courage and joy our goal is to expand this comfort zone of course becca you want to update us on the clinical absolutely so becca here thank you everybody for joining us what's really exciting about being a specialized program especially as a clinical director is saying everything we do gets to be built around what is the best treatment for our anxiety and OCD and OCD related disorders? And what I get excited about is that we really get to hone in on a clinical model that we know is the best practice for these disorders specifically. And of course, we all know anxiety doesn't usually exist alone. There's a lot of comorbidities that come along with it. And what we like to talk about and work through with you guys as the experts of the kids and families you work with is, is what's going on for the student is anxiety in the driver's seat. And certainly we know depressive disorders are really common and co-occurring, ADHD, some other things as well. And so we like to really dig deep and find out if anxiety is in the driver's seat, then that's a student who would benefit greatly from our program. So what is anxiety? What does that really even mean? And I think it's important for us to start there because it's commonly used and commonly thrown, thrown around um, and a lot of people experience it, but what does that mean for our student? So for us, we define anxiety as a normal mental and physiological response to some sort of a perceived threat 
that the person feels that they're not capable of managing, which is really good, right? Anxiety is important for if we're being chased by a lion and we have a, a true threat that's, that's coming after us. Anxiety makes us need to act, to avoid, to run, fight, flight, and freeze, and that whole process that you're all familiar with. What's not helpful is when the threat that's being perceived is not truly a threat to somebody's well-being, to their safety, or to the safety of people around them. And so you can just imagine and have empathy so much for people who feel like they're being chased by a lion all of the time, when really it's something as simple as going out in public or you know, ordering at a restaurant, something of that nature is creating such a, a distress response that's disrupting their life. And we, we go all the way back to Albert Bandura when we're building our clinical model because we know that people with high self-efficacy um, really have lower anxiety and people with low self-efficacy have higher rates of anxiety. Basically meaning if the person is feeling comfortable and confident that whatever threats come their way, they're gonna be successful in managing, then they have less anxiety. And if they feel like the, there's potential threats that are coming their way and what they're anticipating they're not going to be able to manage well then we know anxiety is high and so all of the model that we'll talk about today really is founded on the premise that our goal is to help our girls grow the comfort zone that brad was talking about be able to step into their growth zone which comes with some uncomfortableness and ultimately we know the way to do that is to increase their self-efficacy so to understand that just on one other level, it's important to review the cycle of anxiety and how we conceptualize and how research shows us this anxiety disorder is being created and perpetuated and made worse. Typically what happens is there's some sort of introduction of worry, right? There's some triggering events. Maybe it's not even actual a, a true event where something was um, bad or didn't go well, but there's some sort of a worry. And what that worry makes us want to do is to avoid. And when we avoid that, we feel better for a moment. Then what will happen later is typically a resurgence of that worry or that panic or that distress. And then we continue to feel like we're not able to cope with it and therein feeds additional avoidance. And that you see can continue around and around until that anxiety becomes debilitating and hard to get out of that cycle. Developmentally, what's really important to note too is that adolescents who have anxiety disorders, if not treated, we know the symptoms of that will increase threefold be between 11 years old and 21. So developmentally, it's really pertinent that in adolescents, we're getting them the right support uh, when, it's, when it's really manifesting itself. So what we did here is we said, what is the best approach to increase that self-efficacy? And we've developed the Cascade Stream Model, which really is a, a fancy way for us to outline what is the process that we're walking through and what are each of the steps along the way to get us to that increased self-efficacy and get us to that expanded comfort zone. The very first step is we need to understand the source of anxiety where is it even coming from? And when we know where it's coming from, we're gonna be better able to plan individualized treatment that is going to drive her, our student success. And so we look at all of the following things that you see up there right now. We're gonna be looking at what are the individual's experiences? Are there traumatic things that are the source of anxiety? We're gonna be looking at family dynamics, her health behaviors, right? How does diet and exercise and sleep contribute to symptoms of anxiety? So all kinds of things that you can imagine are going under our assessment of where is this coming from? So we know all of these things contribute to anxiety. What's really important is we know that anxiety is hereditary, up to 70%, and some people would argue even more in research is supporting the hereditary symptoms of anxiety, which means that we have anxious parents as well. So one thing that sets us apart as we approach anxiety and OCD is that every student at enrollment is administered a Pro 7 Series DNA test, and it's looking at our genetics. 
and it's pulling all of the genes on chromosome one, which there's a lot, and we know at least seven of them are linked to increased disorders in anxiety and depression. And it has to do with transcription errors that are on our DNA and essentially mutations that have been passed down for, for many, many generations. And it affects things like how much GABA we're producing on a cellular level. It's affecting things like, do we have the right things to absorb particular vitamins? And we get to take a really exciting scientific approach with our Dr. Dan Purser that when we get the results from the anxiety or from the genetic test, we get to sit down with the treatment team and our students and look at what genetic components are being perpetuated and are presenting our students with some extra level of difficulty because of how she's functioning all the way down to her neurotransmitter efficiency. And with that then, of course, comes a variety of recommendations, whether that be supplemental or lifestyle changes or psychopharmacology, but we get a really good picture at the beginning genetically, what are we really working with here in addition to all of the other things that contribute to anxiety symptoms. The next step in the STREAM model is we need to find our students get help for the motivation for growth. So of course I'm going to go back to the cycle of anxiety and we say that anxiety makes us want to avoid something. So the treatment for that really is to approach the somethings that we want to avoid. To teach what's uh, reasonable and justified fear and what's the fear that is just being perpetuated by the disorder. So when we're gonna be asking our kids to do really hard things, we have to get them to a point where they're ready for it and they're invested in that. And so we use techniques for motivational interviewing, from acceptance commitment therapy. It's really important for our kids to see others who have been successful in combating their anxiety disorder and OCD disorders, and ultimately to increase their autonomy and to increase their opportunity to get them the motivation to live the life that, that they really want and deserve for themselves. The next step is we're going to ask our students to engage in therapy, in education, and ultimately to relevant planned exposure experiences. So what does that really mean? We're using cognitive behavior therapy and a very specialized type of cognitive behavior therapy is exposure response prevention. And exposure response prevention is saying, here's the thing that your anxiety or your OCD is asking you to stay away from, asking you to avoid, and we're gonna help create individualized sequential exposures to get you to do that thing that you're avoiding and to help you be successful when you do that and ultimately will continue increasing the exposures. So what does that really look like? So for example, if we have a student who maybe has social anxiety disorder and she's really terrified of speaking in public and maybe that's prohibited her from ordering at a restaurant or being able to go out with her family into a public place and, and order food. Well, the avoidance cycle, my guess is she probably had somebody else order for her, or maybe she didn't even go into the restaurant. It's really created some barriers in her life and the goals that she wants to achieve. When we plan an exposure for her, maybe the first thing we do is we have her ask our chef for a menu modification. And then maybe the next exposure is we ask her to order over the phone for food delivery. And the next exposure, we ask her to go through a drive through And the next exposure, we take her to a restaurant where she can order something. And then beyond that, we need to take her to lots of different restaurants so that she can continue to generalize her success in those experiences and build upon them and then move them out to other environments. What's also really important is how do we bring in the family therapy into that? As we said, we know that genetics, genetics are showing us that anxiety is up to 70% hereditary. And so we have an anxious family system most of the time. And so in that, it's very important for us that our families are engaged in understanding how their family system and their family dynamic has perpetuated this avoidance how sometimes the family system has accommodated the avoidance to educate them about how we're gonna do the exposures and bring them into that experience as well. Maybe it's the family's own exposures or teaching them to be the coaches to help the student engage in brave behaviors or things that are courageous for them.
So we do that through family therapy. We do that through parent weekends and workshops. We encourage when appropriate and the world opens up again on campus visits and home visits when appropriate and according to the treatment plan. But truly the heart of it is the whole family system needs to understand this dynamic for their benefit and ultimately for the student's benefit to achieve her goals. And so ultimately, the biggest thing that we want to do through all of these therapeutic and exposure experiences is we want our girls to get comfortable being uncomfortable, understanding when it's a safe thing to jump into, even though it doesn't feel good all the time, and doing the thing that she's been avoiding so we can break that cycle of anxiety. When we do all of that, what's next for our students is incremental success. So what that means is when she has done that next thing, when she's gone to the restaurants and she's done the ordering and she's had all of these successful experiences, we know that that's going to increase her self-efficacy. And so one of the ways that's excited about how we monitor incremental success is through a system called Videra, and we use that for our progress monitoring. Videra is high-tech video journaling. And we have the capability to ask our kids over an electronic device things like, what zones of growth have you been in last week? Or how well do you feel like you've been following your treatment plan? Anything that we would like to assess. And our girls will answer, our students will answer those questions. And the system will send that to the therapist. And in addition to the therapist, just being able to see what the student is answering, the Videra system is also providing the therapist with a lot of quantitative data and analytics. For example, it'll measure things like words per minute, or absolutist words, or overall sentiment. And what we see over time as our students engage in this throughout the week and ultimately throughout their entire length of stay, we get to see a comparison of our student against our student. So I had my own personal experience with this system because I think it's important to understand all of the things that we ask our kids to do. And I found that when I'm more distressed in life, my words per minute go down and my absolutist words go up. And for somebody else, it could be the completely opposite experience. Maybe they speak much quicker. Uh, and so it's, we get to create this really nice long set of data that therapists oftentimes have a hard time quantifying, this system helps us do that in a very measurable way so that we can use that information to make sure that we're pushing our girls enough to the growth zone, but not getting into the distress zone where they might have not effective experiences. One of the ways that we also integrate sequential exposures is through the use of electronics. You'll hear us say, um, all of our team will say things about our philosophy, about whatever our girls are gonna do after Cascade Academy, we want them to practice while they're here. That's very important for us because we know a lot of times we've all seen kids who do well in a program and they go home and that very week, now they're online with all of the the bad influences and other things online that are just not helpful for them and the wheels come off quickly. We'd like to have them practice that while they're here. So within six weeks, our kids are getting access to various levels of electronics and social media. What we actually do is we do a very good assessment with the family and with the student about what has the role of electronics been in their anxiety cycle. Have they just been alone in their room, you know, Snapchatting all day and that's been their comfort zone? Or has electronics been a really helpful thing for them where they use apps for calming or deep breathing? Whatever it is, we want to know how electronics have been a part of their life. And then we want to create a treatment plan that then brings electronics to them at Cascade in a healthy way. And so we'll create an individual plan where they're doing workshops, they're, they're learning about whatever their challenges were, we can monitor what they're doing online and track them and, and help them and coach them through how to navigate the, the internet and how to navigate social relationships over, over online platforms. 
Lastly, what's ultimately important is that our girls have all of these experiences and they can transfer them to other aspects of their life and other situations that we know are going to arise. And so the key to that is novelty. We can't just take the girl to one restaurant and say, ta-da, she can order at a menu here. We know that the anxiety brain likes to play tricks on us and it likes us to say, well, I was only successful because I ordered at that one restaurant. Or I was only successful because I hiked that one trail. What's very important in anxiety treatment is that we have novelty and we have variety. And when our student has been successful in all of those different environments, then she can increase her self-efficacy. Then she increases the confidence that what my next challenge is, I know how to face that and how to overcome that. And she's more likely to even approach some of those new challenges and achieve some of her goals that before she might have wished, but never had a plan or a feeling of confidence to know how to do that. What's important for us is that when our kids are getting ready to transition from Cascade Academy, we don't want to just send her out and send her away. We've created a new way for a gradu graduation for our students. And that includes that wherever they're going after Cascade, they're still our student for about six weeks. We're still providing family therapy. We're still providing individual therapy, our progress monitoring through the Videra high-tech journaling system. And what we're doing is we're tracking that in her new growth zone, whether that's home or therapeutic boarding school, in her next growth zone, that she's able to be successful and that she's able to use all of the things we've learned here and transfer that in her self-efficacy and generalize her skills to her new environment. And when she's successful there and she's able to maintain a comfort zone and a growth zone in her next location, then we say, great, it's time to transfer to your next level of care. So ultimately, all of these things together, as we said, the main goal is to increase self-efficacy, which ultimately increases their comfort zone so that the rigidity of where I've been hiding or operating in can expand, can grow, and I can really move in the world a different way, in a more confident way. This is Brad again, and I'll, I'll briefly update you, uh, Leah Kay and I will, about the academics program because that's a, a critical part. As you as a new program, we consulted with a variety of experts um, in designing an effective, an effective environment. Uh, we, of course, paid particular attention to our specialization of girls struggling with anxiety. Uh, school often is a trigger, um, sometimes even an escape. Uh, and so after four reviews of online curriculum programs, we decided um, Alta Independent, as we mentioned earlier, which is based here in Utah, and Alta Independent gives us the ability to cover middle school through 12th grade, as well as uh, AP course curriculum. Uh, it's very rich, uh, very inviting to the girls. They also support the IEP and 504 plans and accommodations. Uh, school is held from 3.30 to 8.30 in the evening with a 30-minute dinner break. Uh, we have a certified teacher uh, certified in college and career readiness, as well as English and history that's with the kids. She combines both online curriculum and direct instruction for school support. Uh, our goal, of course, is to become accredited and have our own accredited school within the next year and a half. Uh, Leah Kay is going to give you an update on girls that we work with who are along the spectrum. Okay, so sometimes we occasionally have a girl that you might have a girl that's slightly on the spectrum. We can support them here. So if they haven't previously had an assessment, we can do that uh, with the certified board behavioral analysis. Um, it would be important for us to kind of differentiate the symptoms. Are they coming from the autism side of it or maybe anxiety? So this BCBA will work closely with our clinical director, Becca, to determine that. Um, and to create, of course, uh, interpersonal communication is a very important piece, not only for our girls on the spectrum, but also uh, all the other girls. So that is a important part of our treatment plan. And then also the milieu, as you all know, uh, having these girls that are slightly on the spectrum is great to have these other girls modeling 
um, typical behaviors, great behaviors. And then we can accommodate some sensory things like noise canceling headphones and things like that. There's some things we can do to, to help them. So I get to talk again about recreation and it's probably my favorite thing to talk about because uh, I believe so much in the experience uh, that takes place within treatment and, and how valuable that is in providing insight, creating that mastery, creating the self-efficacy that we're ultimately trying to achieve. And so uh, we have a very robust recreation program here in Midway. We're surrounded by mountains and state parks and lakes and bike trails and everything you can imagine to enjoy the outdoors. And so as you see here, here are a number of themes that we address while uh, girls are here residents with us and uh, they get the opportunity to explore each one of these themes and what's interesting is whether it's academically, whether it's clinically, whether it's recreationally, uh, there is that transferability of the self-efficacy that's built and that's what's really exciting about the stream model is that process isn't just a one-time uh, cascading process that takes place but it happens over and over again in various different uh, treatment settings so I uh, take for example the theme of courage uh, our our uh, motto here at uh, Cascade Academy is to embrace life with courage and joy we feel like having the courage to take risks, appropriate risks, is very, very much important. And so as you look at the theme, let's take courage, for example, and you apply it to some of the activities that we have access to, both on site and within the community. You might look and see a cuddle therapy. That's actually, it was named by our students. Uh, we have a, a farm that's located a few miles away from us. And they have every animal that you could imagine, everything from little chicks up to large, strong, majestic looking horses. And uh, you know, you might approach a horse initially and think, okay, it's big, it's loud, it smells, it makes that snorting sound that scares me away. And so as we're talking about very intentional, purposeful exposures, uh, we might, uh, in our cuddle therapy experience with these girls, initially expose them to little chicks and then build that to a, a chicken and then a goat and have them work their way up to feeding touching, petting, combing a horse, and eventually riding it. Our goal being the entire time, and it really is an art, is to find out where is their comfort zone, how do I push them out of that comfort zone and into the growth zone without pushing them into the distress zone. And that's my favorite recreational therapy approach to what we're doing with these, uh, with these girls. Uh, my favorite analogy is the orange analogy that I use, and, and, and that's pretty simple. What do you get when you squeeze an orange? Well, orange juice, obviously, because that's what's inside. Well, what do you get when you squeeze Susie or Rebecca or Jennifer? Whatever is inside, that's what you're going to get when you squeeze them. So it's important to be constantly squeezing, pushing, uh, encouraging them to live outside of that comfort zone. And recreation, was, recreation is a great opportunity to do that. What I love, again, referencing the transferability of that self-efficacy is the same principles that allowed you to be great at riding bikes or fishing or rock climbing, those same principles are applicable to other areas of your life, whether that's academics, whether that's relationships with your family, whether that's uh, going home and going to college. You can look back and say, well, what are the principles that taught me to be strong there and how can I apply them here? And so uh, we're very happy to have a very robust recreational experience while girls are enrolled here at Cascade Academy. Um, you know, as a therapist, we all like to say that what we do in the therapy office is, is super important, and it is, and equally, but sometimes if not more so, what happens in the milieu matters a lot for, for healing and, and learning. And so I got really excited getting on board with Cascade Academy to go, wow, you know, just as a clinical director, I don't need to train 30 different disorders. And here's the way we approach each one of them. And hey, mentor, do this differently with Sally and do this differently with Sarah. And here's why. And really have to explain all of this really in-depth things behind it. What we get to do is we get to specialize not only for our students because it's a, a unique population, we get to specialize how we train our mentors and, and, then, and then individualize from there after we get a really good in-depth understanding of it. And so things that are happening in the milieu that are very important 
important for our treatment is, as Leah Kay mentioned, our interpersonal skills training. How do we make friends? How do we resolve conflict? How do we give and receive feedback appropriately and, and get what we need? We also bring in a lot of life skills, whether that's gardening or doing internships and jobs, supporting our chef, really whatever that, that student is interested in, we wanna support that life skill and make it relevant and meaningful. What happens a lot in treatment is just what we'd call organic exposures, right? We were exposed to different types of people and we learn different things and, and that's, that's all very good. We have organic exposures that are ran in some of our skills groups led by our mentors, things about um, you know, body image or self-esteem or social skills, whatever it might be that's relevant to our kids. We're doing a lot of that. But what we also have is purposeful exposures and planned exposures. So this is driven from the treatment plan, which is driven from the assessment to understand the anxiety. So for example, if I have a student who I know really struggles um, socially, maybe what we'll, we'll propose for her is a purposeful exposure in the milieu where maybe she begins by teaching someone she feels safe with a new game. And then that'll transfer to teaching more people or her peers a game. And then that will transfer over to teaching a less known person a new game. And so that type of exposure is built into our treatment plans that can be played out in our milieu with the support of our mentors who are very well trained in the anxiety cycle. Ultimately, again, the important part of that is we want to eliminate the avoidance, we want to disrupt the cycle of anxiety, and we want to help our kids do the scary thing that they've been avoiding. So speaking of scary things, <laughs> um, we've got uh, an interesting situation here that we've been dealing with across the nation, across the world, and that's the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we did want to touch base on this quickly for a more in-depth, specific understanding of our policy, you can refer to our website. It's www.cascadeacademy.com. There's a COVID-19 link that will give very specifics about uh, how we are dealing with this. But there's an important principle that we did want to share with you, uh, and, and that is basically that while we're very much regulating the interactions that staff and students are having on campus, uh, we have worked very hard to find a creative way to create opportunities for students to enroll, still respecting the safety of everyone here. And basically what that means is as we're working with our referral partners, we're asking that prior to enrollment, uh, families or schools or wilderness programs, whoever that is, is tracking the symptoms of our students for at least seven days prior to enrollment. That includes temperature, that includes uh, the sense of smell and coughing and sickness and any any flu signs that they can track we're asking for a record of that for seven days prior to enrollment here um, we do have the unique ability because we are new we have nine bedrooms and they are not all full uh, we can provide safe social distancing for all of our students we can provide quarantine if necessary but uh, we've had conversations training and extensive uh, policy enforcement with our staff, uh, suspending all employee business travel and making sure staff are, are reporting the interactions that they're having to do that. So we believe that we are on the front end of being safe, uh, being uh, aware of what the threats are and protecting our students here on campus uh, while still, again, allowing for students to enroll. So if you do have a client that you think could potentially be a good fit for us, please do give us a call. We can talk through this policy, we can talk through that process, and we are more than happy to look at them. Uh, time is running very short, it moves very quickly, and we're so, so grateful that you guys were willing to spend uh, some time with us today. We wish you could be here. We wish you could come see the beautiful Heber Valley and smell the fresh air and get in the outdoors. Uh, we wish that you could feel the energy on campus and meet some of our staff. Uh, there's no substitute for that energy as you meet staff. They're very well trained. They all have very great experience and they're very much invested in making this a wonderful, wonderful experience for our students. But since you can't be here, we've done our best to at least show off the facility a little bit. We're very proud of it. Um, it was very, very uh, kind of scattered while inserting this into PowerPoint directly. So I'm going to jump us over to YouTube and uh, hopefully give you a chance to see 
what Cascade Academy is all about. Again, thank you very much. I know there's a very, very tight time crunch. We'd like again to thank Jean and uh, everyone at ICA who has helped put this together. Thank you all. Uh, I, we, I did see a number of questions that uh, you asked throughout this presentation. We will be responding to you. And uh, please feel free to reach out to us at any time uh, for any admissions needs. Uh, Leah K at CascadeAcademy.com. Uh, would be your initial uh, touch point for any admissions calls or questions that you might have, uh, or you can find all of our contact information on our website. Thank you all and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks a bunch.